Okay, this is part two, and uh, Anna, you are standing uh, next to a bunch of your uh, work, which is illustration. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you been illustrating uh, books, mostly children's books, right? Yes, yes, except this one, which is, uh, they are my botanical paintings, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this is, uh, it became actually a book later, which is called White Flowers for All Seasons. You can see some of the originals over there. Oh wow! And uh, but most of them are children's books. I actually started as a. I, I come from from Prague, from Czech Republic, and uh, this is where I studied animation film. And then when I came to Canada, I worked at the National Film Board. But I realized that there you have to also do the technical part. You know, like in in, in Prague, like you you are the artist and somebody else does the animation, but I, there I had to do everything and I really don't like the, the, the technical part. And I like detail and I like to spend a lot of time with one painting. So I said, why should I make myself crazy? I would rather put all my effort into individual illustrations. So this is how I started to illustrate children's books. Ah. And my first uh, children's book was in Canada in 1976, but my first book in um, the United States was, was in 1979, a long time ago. Wow. I don't know if you can even remember. Uh, oh, I can remember 79, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty old. But, um, but uh, yeah, uh, so it was with Double Day, it was called The Star Husband, and this is what started me. Do you have a count? Do you know how many books you've illustrated? Wow. Books. Um, I have also illustrated a lot of um, like reading programs. So the, the, it is like, you know, like little books which uh, go mostly to schools, but the trade books, what you call these books which mm -hmm. are in the stores, uh, I would say about 20 of them. How long does it generally take you to, um, you know, do you, will you spend on, a, you know, average on a book? Well, from the point of getting the manuscript and signing a contract to the book being on the shelf, it's average about two years. Wow. But my part is, I, I would average it about, uh, I would say, eight months to a year. Goodness. Yeah, because you, you have to really, I, I will show you in the next room a little bit. I have oh, let's go. Some, let's go over there. The process here. Like you, you start, you know, you have to, uh, you have to make decisions first mm -hmm. about how many pages, uh, what size, and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's also calculated by by uh, the you know the the, the, um, the sales department, like how much can they invest, and so so it's not as as free. You know, it's uh, you start somewhere. And uh, then uh, you go through the process. You are these all originals? These are all originals, yeah. Wow. Yeah, these are all originals. And this is also all originals here. My goodness. Yeah, and then, you know, then you communicate with the publisher on this level, like on the sketch level. Oh, I see, okay. You know? And then you have to work out all the details also. Uh, placing of the text and everything has to be worked out in this stage and then you go to the final work where you see for example here you can see here this is what the text will be and here I have to be very careful on making the background light enough oh. so that you can overprint you see oh, so this okay. is why uh, I cannot from this point I have to trace it very exactly Mm -hmm. on the page. I cannot improvise anymore. Right. You see? And uh, as you see, it's very different than my other work. I have to be very exact and uh, also know how it will print, how, how it will... I'm guessing this is like there's going to be a split in the middle of the page. Yes, yes. And in old times, <laughs> you know, when I was young, uh, in old times it was like you had to be very careful here and make a gap of about an uh, inch. Of nothing too, too important. Nothing 
at all or or just to make a continuous color because they would cut it. Oh. Now with computers they stretch the middle so you you still have to be careful or not to put something in the middle so that it gets lost when it when the book is bound but that you don't have to do these uh, uh, the, the, gaps right. anymore. Yeah. Wow, there's so much to it. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine two years invested into one of these books. So it's probably pretty important that you have that contract locked up if you're going to invest two years into this process for one book. Yeah. I mean, that's a well, big part I of someone's life. For, of, of the, the actual work, it's like eight months to a year. But, uh, you know, what goes before and what goes after, then it goes into, uh, into printing. Usually it's printed overseas and mm -hmm. then... Uh, all that advertising stuff, oh, yeah. you know, and all this. So now, when you're taking this kind of work on, right? Mm -hmm. And now, like when you're doing your paintings, your oil paintings, right? Yeah. That is something that's coming from inside of you. It's totally your vision. Yeah. You you work on it when you're inspired. When you're not, you put it down. Yeah. But when you're do, taking on these kind of things for hire, are you? Do you find sometimes you f you're like, oh, this is a job, and uh, you're not as inspired to do it, or do you have the same passion to do illustrations that you do to ha to do your own personal, all right, this is 100% my vision, mm -hmm. oil painting? Well, I when I illustrate, I like think of the story, Mm -hmm. I, it's my interpretation, like the, the publisher is not telling me what to do. Right. And uh, this, they would choose me because of my style and because of my way of interpretation. So this is how it works. Like people think sometimes that if you write a story and find an illustrator and then you submit it to a publisher, this is how it would, you know, how it would get published. But it's not how it works because, because the editors and the publisher, they have like their own vision of what they think that the story would need. Mm. So uh, they send me the story and then I kind of like think, well, how would I do it? Is it something I really think that I, I could really bring something to it? So it's like I really bound to the story. Mm. And, uh, and I work like with a totally different um, way of approaching art. I'm telling a story in a picture. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of the children. I think of what I liked when I was little. Right. You know? yeah. So uh, so I like these little magical things, you know, and yeah. something you can recognize, you know. Right, yeah. Um, like your little mouse and he's hanging out there and your ladybug and, and the birds and they're chasing after things. And, yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. It's, it's, I mean, it's it's a life's work. I mean, so you got started when you were pretty young. Well, yeah, you know, like in in my country, you you do start pretty young. Like I went, I actually started toy design since I was fourteen years old. You, you have uh, professional schools which are on on uh, uh, the level of high schools. Mm -hmm. So I did. Oh. I did. Uh, I went to art school. You have all the other subjects like math and physics and uh, you know all these things. But you you are already um, you know you are already st studying something. <laughs> Can you take me to where you create? Where you create? Where your uh, where your where your painting is and everything? Your your workspace. Uh, yeah, my illustration workspace is right here. Right at your. Right at, place. right at the dock, right at the messy there. dock over there. Yeah. Wow, this is very neat. Jeff yeah. Weaver's face is not this neat, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> he is not you this see, neat. I put down the curtains. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, you're very organized. And here's your. So, what are the. Oh, these are your brushes right here. Where's your palette? Do you use a palette? It, it, well, these are mostly watercolors, so these oh, are, these are my, you want, should, you want me to yeah. show you my watercolor box? <laughs> hmm. So this is my watercolor box. This one I bought in Switzerland. Um, Do you ever get back to Prague? Yeah, oh, wow. I had a show, actually there's a poster from my show, I had their show, what is it now, uh, 19th? 
no, 2007. So this is my messy there box. It is. Please. It's beautiful. Yeah. I want to take a picture of that. But you know, I, I like some people who work with watercolor. They most people actually like the tubes, but I like the cakes because I, it is like for me, you know, like a typewriter. I know where everything is, uh -huh. so I just, you know, I just. You can get right to it. Go and thinking. don't have to think. Yeah, and I learned actually to get. I'm not naturally organized person, but I had to learn to be organized because if you are in the process of doing something, it just drives me crazy if I cannot find something. So, so I usually have like my my board with my with my painting here, and then this I would have here, or sometimes this would be standing next to it, and I have my and my brushes and water and so so I can you know I can. Here and with my big paintings, I usually have um, I usually have like plastic over here, and I have I have uh, the easel, and uh, here on this this I cleaned up just for the open studio <laughs> because they are usually have like all these all these paints. Oh, I see. Yeah. You see, right. It's yeah. like showing underwear. That's all your, to <laughs> all your tools you in the see? trade. Yeah. Yeah. They are my paints and my. Yeah, and my brushes are over there, and uh, because this is a beautiful floor, I I take down plastic, and uh, I don't think I'm terribly messy, but I'm also not as clean as some people. <laughs> so, you know, and this gives me a little bit more of uh, entitlement to, to messiness. In an illustration, I can't be messy. Yeah, very precise. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you know, it takes toll on your body. Well, Anna, thank you so much for this. Well, thank you we so much. We appreciate it. <laughs>